Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Algebra Show. Um, so we were talking about splitting fields. Uh, so let's um, let's remember what they were. So we have a field, and we have a polynomial over it, and the splitting field of that polynomial is the field that makes that polynomial split. So what does precisely what does that mean? It means there's some field extension. Uh, we say E is a splitting field. And when you look at the polynomial over, uh, <clears throat> over, over the bigger field, uh, you get that the polynomial splits into the smallest possible factors, which are degree one. And maybe the alphas repeat, uh, but whatever, even if they repeat, the, the, the irreducible factors are all linear. And out of all the fields, all the fields you could find inside of F that have this property that the polynomial split uh, inside of E, sorry, uh, this is the smallest one because it's it's the smallest field uh, that you can get to, uh, the smallest field that, that you need if you're gonna include all the alphas. So E is generated over F, by the roots of the polynomial. Um, so I should say, for example, um, if I think of the real polynomial, my favorite example, x squared uh, plus one, if I now look at it over the complex numbers, I can't do this over the reals, but I can over the complex numbers, uh, it, it splits. Um, so the complex numbers are a splitting field of um, of x squared plus one over r. Uh, I mean, so there's two conditions. One is that the polynomial splits. It does. The other is that uh, the the roots generate the the field which which they do the smallest field subfield of C containing I is the complex numbers. Actually, I put this in the homework showing that in the read to extension there's nothing in between. Let me just tell you the solution. The stuff in between has to have degree dividing two. So either it has degree two and it's a big field, or it has degree one and it's a small field. So there's a there's a homework solve for you. I think it was the honors problem. So today, oh, so Wednesday, Wednesday we showed that for any polynomial you can find a splitting field because. We know you split into reducible factors. You add, and, and we know that we can always add roots. So just keep adding roots. You know, you add roots, it factors in some smaller pieces. And if they're not small enough, then you keep going. And, and it's clear that, you, that you're gonna finish. Uh, today, we're gonna see uh, a, an incredibly important theorem, which is that I can really talk about the splitting field. Um, Given, given given the field and the polynomial, um, there's only one splitting field. Um, and what, I mean, that's clearly not true. I mean, nothing, no statement of that sort is true. Uh, there's never just one group or one ring or one field. There's always just one up to isomorphism. So if you find two, they're essentially the same. And I'm gonna. I'm about to make this more precise. Um, so um, anyway, once I make it precise, uh, I should really. I can really talk about the splitting field and not a splitting field. There's, there's. If you want to take this polynomial, you want to make it split over a field that contains R. Uh, you're gonna. The only thing you're gonna make is the complex numbers. Um, you can call, you know, you can call I, you can call it J, but it still, it works the same as the complex numbers. This looks like an X now.
<clears throat> okay, so uh, before, so I'm gonna, so this is a very, um, so I mean, this is the content of lemma 2132 and theorem 2134 in the book, but they're like the probably the most technical statement we've seen in the whole course. So I'm gonna, I wanna. I want to do an example first uh, to see what we're saying, uh, what, what they mean. So I want to say somehow that splitting fields are unique. Before that, what I'm going to show is that the field, if you, if you add a root of a polynomial, then a reducible polynomial, you, you get a unique answer, which is something that is kind of been kind of implicit in what we've been doing in the last couple of weeks. We could have proved it earlier, but uh, now I'm actually going to prove it very carefully. So um, let's see. So I'm going to look at the splitting field of the cubic root, of, let's say the cubic root of two. So um, before that, let's look at the field um, that we get by adding a root of f to q into different ways. So um, so here's how we can add a root of, of this polynomial, just add a cubic root of two. Um, but I have another way because, well, I, this came up Wednesday, I think there, there's three, there, there's three cubic roots of two, right? So I could, I could add one of the complex roots. So for example, add, add this one. So you take, what you do is you take a cubic root of one uh, this is a complex number. And I'll leave you to check that it has argument 120 degrees. So it's a third of a turn. So it's, a, it's one of the two interesting cubic groups of one. Um, you, you multiply, you, when you cube this number, of course, you're gonna get one times two. So this is also a cubic root of two. So these are definitely not the same field because one is made only of real numbers and the other is made only is, is made of mostly complex numbers. The only real numbers that there are the rationals. So these are not equal, but they are, their algebra is the same. Um, actually, let me, why not go option three? Um, So here I have just the construction, the construction I know that works for any reducible polynomial, just the polynomial ring mod some ideal. So whenever I see an X cubed, that, that's a, a two. Maybe the class of this class, we will call alpha. So this is to adjoin just some symbol alpha, but alpha cubed is two. So here are three ways of adding a cubic root of two to the rational numbers, and they're different. They're, they're different. One, you know, two. In one, I added a real number. In one, I added a complex number, and in the in the third one, I added a letter, um, and I and, and it's a letter. It has no real or imaginary parts. It's just a letter. Uh, but my point is. that all of these are the same or isomorphic. <clears throat> so, um, so I think, well, so let's construct an isomorphism. Um, so we need to take the elements I'm gonna construct it and not prove it, but um, I'm gonna prove the theorem anyway. 
So we need to take the elements and, and say for an element, um, an element of of the first option. So so this is what it, this is what uh, all elements look like. This is what all elements look like for some a zero a one for some for three rational numbers because well the we have one generator it's algebraic it's its powers zero one and two form a basis over q which is to say everything can be written uniquely as one of these things uh, a linear combination with rational coefficients so elements of so I need I need to send this I need to send this element to an element of say the second option um, so what do the elements of the second field look like well again the powers of the generator are a basis. So so something of this form. <clears throat> uh, for where the, the coefficients again are rational. So, I mean, I have three rational numbers on one side, three rational numbers on the other. And for example, the, the constants, uh, I should make my life easy, try to just send a zero to be, you know, send one to one, for example, send three halves to three halves. Um, I think it, it's, there's clearly, there, there's a, a clear choice here for what B0, B1, B2 uh, should be. Which is obviously just make them equal to the thing you started with. And if you and if you want to uh, to make a map to the third option, well, the third option is also just linear combinations of the powers of alpha. So just match the coefficients. We have c zero plus c one alpha plus c two alpha squared. Just make the c is equals to the a's and equals to the b's and, and there you go uh so that's a map uh i'm not going to prove that it's an isomorphism let me just write it again so if you have an element oh i, I like the color coding though Actually, I like these to be black. Really, real fancy with it. So, um, what element should this one be? Well, like I said, just keep the coefficients and just multiply by whatever new thing generates this field. And if you wanted to make now an isomorphism with my new, my third option. You would just keep the coefficients exactly the same and switch up the powers of, what are the powers that show up in there? So, um, so I mean, clearly these are bijections. Clearly the inverse is just, the inverse of keeping the coefficients the same is given by giving the, keeping the coefficients the same. Uh, um, 
so uh, the, we should show um, these are also um, homomorphisms. So they are isomorphisms. So I'm not gonna do the computation because I'm gonna do it in general, but just think of what happens when you send, you know, one plus two cubic root of two. You get sent to, and say, you know, you know the question is do you, if you square it, so, oh, let me call this phi. Just show you that if you, um, so I wanna, I wanna take one plus cubic root of two and multiply by the square of the cubic root of two. So if these are an isomorphism, it should be the same applying phi before or after multiplying, it should give you the same answer. So let's just, let's just compute it. And I mean, it's gonna give me the same answer, but really you notice that how it has to give me the same answer. So if you if you multiply, what I get here is cubic root of two squared plus cubic root of two cubed. And the thing about the cubic root of two is that when I cube it, I get two. So now I wanna apply phi and I have these coefficients here. The coefficient here is one, the coefficient here is two, the, the rational numbers in front of the powers of the cubic root of two, those are obviously, and, and then there's one that's zero, obviously. Uh, so what I'm supposed to do is keep the coefficients the same and replace the cubic root of two and its powers by the powers of the other cubic root of two. So, uh, so that's one one of the multiplications. Uh, how is that? How is that there? What is that doing there? It's not. I don't see it in my tablet. The, I'm so confused. All right. All right. Whatever. Uh, let's do the other. Let's do the other side. And see that there's just there's just no way I get because the only thing I use to do this computation is that the cube of the cubic root of two is two. Now this is, now I'm just gonna do the same reasoning for a different cubic root of two. So now I'm applying, I'm applying phi first. So these coefficients are one and one, and this one is also one. So what I'm supposed to do is just keep those ones, but now replace one cubic root of two by the by the other cubic root of two, and that's how you do it. You you find and replace, <laughs> and and then I'm supposed to multiply. So how do I multiply? Well, um, I multiply by multiplying, and now I'm faced with a cubic a cubic root of two that is cubed. So Well, that's just two. Um, and there you go, I got the same answer. But you know, it's not the it's not the example. It's the fact that the only thing I use is that is the, the one polynomial that this element vanishes at. And if I now go through and replace all the cubic roots of two by alphas, I'm obviously gonna get the same answer provided that alpha cubed is, is two. And that's why these are isomorphisms. All right, so that is one example. Um, so that was the easy example. Let's do, um, let's do now the tricky one. <clears throat> so, So say I, I, I proved it, which I'm about to. I know that uh, 
I know that these two fields are isomorphic um, because I I just convinced myself that sending the elements of this form to the elements of the same form is an isomorphism. Uh, so if you remember from Wednesday, if this, these are not the splitting fields because you take x cubed minus two and, and they don't finish splitting. So what if I try to finish splitting? Uh, what about the splitting fields? Um, so what I want to say is that over this real, this field made of real numbers, x cubed minus two has a factor given by the fact that I have this root. And then I have um, this other factor, which turns out to be irreducible. As I showed, uh, I think I, I did this on Wednesday, yeah. If I, if I do this over, over um, the second field I'm looking at, <clears throat> again, I have a factor of degree one because I have a root and then I have some stuff left over. And well, the thing is, it's not the same because I divided by a different thing. However, it's it's what corresponds. It's still no. it's still it's the same up to this isomorphism that replaces every every time it finds cubic root of two uh, somewhere it, 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 it multiplies it by an omega. Uh, and I guess just for funsies. <clears throat> What do you think is going to happen if I just add? Oh, this is a cube. What? The? Hopefully, that was clear that it should be a cube. Um, that, that it should be a three and not a two. Oops. I'm sorry about that. Um, so, x cubed minus two. Of course, now the root is called alpha. But what happens is that. Uh, the factorization is again not the same. It has alphas instead of cubic roots of two, but but it's also kind of the same. Okay. So the question is, um, if so, what I want to say. Let me not just say what say the answer and not the question. Um, take take q adjoin the cubic root of two, and let's say you add a root which I'm gonna call hmm, beta. So, so we get so we had a root of this polynomial. So now we do have the splitting field because the resulting over this field it is going to split into three linear factors. On the other, um, on the other side, we could. I want to add a root of this other factor. Let me call it beta tilde, I guess. And I could say I'm adding a complex number, but mm, that I think that's going to make it confusing. So now you get some other, you get another splitting field. So what is going to happen is that there is an isomorphism between between these two 
splitting fields. But not only that, but it, um, if I call this one phi, it's, it's extending phi. So that means that when you evaluate, when you see where an element of this kind goes, it still goes to these kind of things. If there's no, basically, if you have an element in here with no betas, it's still going to, it's still going uh, via this map. So, and, and, and this is important because, um, well, it's what's going to go into the proof. But also, if you if you think about finding, if you if you think of this over the complex numbers, um, you take you adding you you have one figure of two, the real one, and then you're adding this, which is the root of this polynomial. It, it's the root of one of, of this factor, which is going to be a cubic root of two. So you're adding the real cubic root of two, and then a complex cubic root of two. Um, <clears throat> on the on the other side, you're adding a complex cubic root of two, and then you're adding. Uh, I mean, you're really you're adding both roots of the of the polynomial. If you add one, you're going to have to add the other because it's degree two. If it splits into a degree one factor, because the other thing has to be degree one. So you're adding one root of two, and you, then you're adding the other two. So if you think of what would happen inside the complex numbers, these fields would be actually just the same field identically the same field but this isomorphism that i'm constructing here is not the identity so of course this field is equal to itself but it's also isomorphic to itself in in some messed up ways uh, in some ways that send real numbers to non-real numbers and um stuff like that so some stuff is happening here some kind of some some really interesting stuff is happening really. So uh, let me let me say that in let me write that down. Um, so we have oh, I have to write so much now. <clears throat> so let's try. See if I can pull this off. Um, so I have I have these two extensions. Let me just ignore alpha for now. So I have I take Q and I add I I go two different ways. I add two different cubic roots of two, but I have phi that sends one linear combination of, of this kind to just the same, basically the same thing on the other side. And I wanna say that I can, <clears throat> that I can go like this. Uh, so, um, I should say beta is a root of one, the factor that shows up in the red product, and beta tilde is a root of the other one. All right, so you, in both cases, you've added one or one or the other root of the polynomial, and then in the second step you add uh, the root of the other factor, and and you should still be getting isomorphic fields. So, how to do this? The answer is I'm going to do exactly what I did before. It's just messier because I have more symbols, but basically. Elements of elements down here are 
so now I'm thinking of, of Q cubic, cubic root of two as the base field. So beta is just some algebraic thing of minimal polynomial uh, like so of degree two. So what they look like is they look like a zero plus a one beta for some coefficients in the base field. So of course they look like this, but I'm not gonna write it, write it like that because that would be confusing. Uh, on the other side, elements of Q of the other cubic root of two and the other new thing that we're adding, they are they have the same exact same form, maybe B and B. So, beta tilde. This, if I write them like this, it's starting to look the same. So now, before I said just make a zero equal to b zero uh, and a one equal to b one. That doesn't work anymore because a zero and a and b zero, you know, they're they're in different in different fields. Um, these are real numbers. These are mostly not real numbers. Um, so there's no way. They're not, they're not the same. I can't make them equal, but I have a way of matching them. So what I should be doing is sending a0 plus a1 beta to phi of a0 plus phi of a1 beta. And that is clearly gonna be a bijection because the phi is a bijection and Again, what's happening? If you wanna, if if you wanna show that it's a homomorphism, what's happening is that all I'm using is that phi sends this polynomial to this, so that beta and beta uh, beta tilde beta tilde have not the same minimal polynomial, but it's the same via phi. If you apply phi down here. You get you get the you get one from the other. Um, and the only rule and that's the only rule I use when I operate when I add and multiply this. Well, when I add, I don't even use that rule when I multiply. <clears throat> so, um, for example, the cubic root of two plus beta, it gets sent to phi of the cubic root of two plus of one times beta tilde. And now I look at what phi is. Phi consists of replacing cubic roots of two by omega cubic root of two. And if there's no cubic roots of two, then that's all I need to do. So this is how you compute this isomorphism. It sends probably real numbers to complex numbers. It's just, I mean, it's definitely not the identity, even if beta was a complex number. Uh, but the moral of the story is that the only thing I used to I used to know how to multiply is the minimal polynomial, and the minimal polynomial is as much as as equal as it could be, which is it's equal when you apply when you apply phi, you get the same. All right. Uh, so this is kind of tricky. Um, maybe I'm gonna put a cut here and then come back in the next video and do the improve the theorem. All right, I'll see you in a second.